Hi, I'm Judy Hayner with Bernina of America. I'd like to welcome you to Bernina Community Studio. Today for our embroidery project, we're going to be making this cute little uh, in the hoop pouch. It's completely done in the embroidery hoop with an applique. But the cool thing that we're going to do to make it different is add some decorative stitches, a pattern that we're going to create right in the machine that will stitch behind the applique. So we're kind of texturing the front of our, our little pouch. Now I have all of the supplies here, you can see in the front, ready to go. Uh, we're using a lightweight tearaway stabilizer. And then the next thing we need to do is set up our design completely on the machine. So I'm gonna get started with that and show you exactly what you need to do to create your own in the hoop quick little pouch. Okay, to create the textured background, we're going to be using a stitch from the sewing stitches folder. So we'll go ahead and select that and then select the decorative stitch folder. The, design, uh, the stitch we're going to be using is in folder number 1001. This is on the B880. Then we'll scroll through and we're going to be using stitch number 20. So it's going to come onto the screen and it's going to size it to the most appropriate hoop. We're going to be creating our design using the oval hoop. So we'll touch that menu and select the oval hoop and now close it. And I do have the grid and the center markings also uh, turned on on this uh, project. Close that. Now, before I start working with this, because we're going to be using endless embroidery, I'm going to change the color of this stitch so that all the stitch pattern is a different color and we'll go right into the color tab and to change a thread color or brand we touch this uh, kind of circling arrows icon and then it, it's going to default to isochord we can change it to any color because i just need it for visibility it's not exactly the color i'm going to stitch it out to be so i'm going to touch zero to nine and just uh, enter a number and I'm going to enter number 1115 and it's it'll create a nice contrast against the rest of the design we're creating so we'll select that now that I have that I'm going to uh, now that I've changed that color we'll go right back to the editing tab and you can see it's here on the screen let's open up information and locate the endless embroidery uh, icon so that tool is now opened, and when it opens, it fits in as many as it thinks the hoop will hold. It also defaults to the reference marks. We're going to deactivate those because we're not using this in the traditional method that Endless Embroidery was designed for. We're using it to create a duplicates of design. This has multiplied it to be eight times, and we're going to take this down to six. Oops, six. Um, just as a clarification, this would put spaces between our design, which we don't want, and this would fit a design to the hoop. We've made our changes of deactivating, and now we have six repeats, and we're going to confirm that. Now, we're going to create uh, more of a pattern, but first let's rotate this, and we're going to rotate it a quick 90. And it does indicate that it's outside the boundaries of the hoop, but I'm not going to worry about that because we're only rotating it so that we can go back to endless embroidery and multiply that row so we have two rows. So we want two rows, nothing selected, and it still does the endless embroidery action. This red barrier always is about what will stitch inside the hoop and what is outside the stitching area. So we're gonna confirm this. And then we'll go back and we will rotate this again a quick 90. So now it's all within the hoop, just as we need it to be. Um, one thing to note is the order of how this will stitch. Here's our start point for this particular motif. And then it ends here and it's gonna start back down here. So I wanna rearrange that um, stitch order by mirror merging it. So first with it selected, I need to go back in the breadcrumbs. We'll scroll down and we'll find group and we're gonna ungroup those two rows. So I'm gonna go ahead and select layer number two, touch the eye and the information and we're going to mirror it left, right and we're gonna mirror it up, down. So as you can see, this is the start point 
this is the end point. If I touch layer one, this is the start point, this is the end point. So it would continue to just move right over and stitch in that direction. So that's the reasoning for that. Now we're gonna group this back together by touching group. And we've got our two layers back together where they need to be. That's how easy it was to create our background. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add in the in the hoop pouch. This is a, a design from um, the Sassy, uh, Now we're going to add in the pouch, and the pouch design comes from the Sassy and Sweet Zipper Pouch Collection 51241, and we're using uh, design number 05S, so it will fit into the, the large oval hoop. So we're going to merely touch the add, because we want to add it to it. We're going to go back to all the folders, and I did save it onto the machine already, otherwise it could have been uh, loaded from the USB stick. And we'll touch number two, which is the design. Now it comes up a little bit faint because of the col thread colors that were uh, assigned to it by the designer. But if we touch uh, layer number one, you can see this is right in the middle. We're going to be making some changes to our stitch pattern but first, for visibility, I want to make some changes to the pouch thread colors so that we can see things better. So I'm going to close the edit screen and with the pouch selected, touch the color tab. Now this is the first color change of the pouch design. So what I want to do is go ahead and touch change and let's just turn that to black so you can see. This is our zipper placement line. Now to proceed through and change the other colors, we can just use the down arrow below the design, and I'm not going to make them exactly the same color because we want to be able to see things. This is stitching. And then I'm going to continue to make some changes to different segments of the design, each one different in the order that they're stitching out. And now this one is fine because that's a placement line for our applique fabric, it's already in black. I can't see this very well, so I'm gonna go ahead and change the color of that so we can see it. Again, this is black. And then last but not least, we're getting into the stitching of the final part of the pouch. So with that, now we've got a better visibility of all the parts and pieces. So let's go back and take a look. Touch the edit, and you can see it's much more visible now. Uh, everything's broken into an individual color step for us to see. And when we get to stitching it out, I'll explain why, that, why that's an important step for this particular project that we're doing. Okay, now what we want to be able to do is take the decorative stitches and fit them. Let me get this back where you can see it. They're going to be within the area between the zipper and the bottom of the bag. So with it selected, we're going to move it. Sometimes you have to go back and forth to be able to see visibly that you're getting it in there. It's pretty good, but we do need to make a few changes to its height and width to get it to fit perfectly within there. So let's open up the information and we're going to scroll up with number one selected, layer number one, which is only the endless embroidery stitches selected, we're going to resize this a smidge. So we're going to uh, change the width down. We're gonna resize them independently, so we need to take off the proportional lock, and then we can adjust the width and the height separate. So we're gonna take this down to about 95%, and we're going to increase the height to about 105. This way, when it stitches, the ends of the uh, design will be within the stitching area that gets covered by a seam line. So let's take a look here. And to get up close, we can kind of see that it's going to stitch 
onto the fabric but not into the zipper. And since this is on pan, we can check all areas by moving around and panning the design. And I think I'm going to go back to the move icon and just move this just, wrong one. Wrong one, wrong one. We just go here and move this one just a little bit. Take a look at it all together. This will get caught just a little bit, but I think that's a better positioning of the design. Now what we're going to do is we'll go back in the breadcrumbs and we'll zoom back out again. And I'm gonna select all of it and position it back in the middle because it got slightly moved when we were up close and moving things around and I had the whole layer selected. So see how easy it is to fix those kinds of things when they happen. Now the thing we need to take care of is the way it's gonna stitch now, this would be the first thing to stitch. We want to get the um, textured background within this design. So we're gonna select the in the hoop design. We're going to go into the breadcrumbs. We're going to scroll down and we'll find the group icon and ungroup it. So now all the parts and pieces of the design are in individual layers. So let's begin by grouping things together that should be by touching layer number two, which is placement line for the zipper. We'll touch group one time, two times, three times. The next thing we see is the applique. We want the decorative stitches to stitch before the applique. So we'll touch layer number one, we'll touch the eye and the breadcrumbs, and we'll touch rearrange. And we're going to touch the up arrow to have this stitch on top of the fabric before the placement line for the applique happens. So we'll touch layer number one, and we'll group everything back together because it's in position now. Touch the group and continue to group all the rest of the design back together so we know how the stitch order is going to be. And again, by changing the colors in the pouch, we were able to see better what is happening on the design. The design now is ready to stitch. So we'll close this window and we would be ready to begin the process. So by choosing the stitching um, icon, it tells us it's going to move the hoop and then it wants the hoop to be put onto the machine. So we'll put the hoop onto the machine and then we'll get ready for the stitching process. So let me grab the hoop. always have to do what the machine wants you to do. We'll grab the hoop and it's onto the machine into position. Now in the stitching screen, the first thing that's going to stitch is our zipper placement line right onto the stabilizer. But there's some things that we need to do housekeeping wise in this window to prepare to stitch. One is we do want it to cut and trim the connecting stitches between the colors. The other thing we want to do is group together some of the thread colors. That is the reason we changed the pouch thread colors. They were identified all as the same color thread. So if we used this icon, the machine would not stop after the placement line, the stitching lines, and so on. But now, as you can see, a placement line will stitch, the stitch down of the zipper will, the tack down of the zipper will stitch, and then it has to start building the pouch, stopping in between each one. But then, when it starts stitching the endless embroidery, it's going to stop between each one also. We don't want that. And we don't want the thread cutter to happen because it would also cut threads between each one of these. So that's the reason that when we first, let's go back to the beginning. When we first get started, we are going to have the thread cutter on. We are going to choose to combine light colors because when it does, when we get to those decorative stitches, 
it'll continually stitch the whole thing together. We will turn off the thread cutter before we stitch those so that it does not cut in between each individual stitch. So that is just some of the steps that we have to do to have efficient stitch out, but also it, we're kind of tricking the machine, but it does what it's told to do and it does its stops in relationship to um, the colors that are indicated in the stitching sequence, but also the tools that we're using over here. So we're going to go back to the beginning because there's one other thing I want you all to check on your machines before you start stitching, and that is your embroidery settings. So let's touch the, the settings icon, and then we will touch the hoop. And in here we can control settings within the embroidery stitch out. The first thing we're going to do is touch thread away and make sure that is turned off. We don't want thread away happening during this in the hoop prog project. And then we'll go in the breadcrumbs back and go over to the securing stitches. We want to have stitch securing stitches at the beginning turned off and at the end turned off. The other term for this is smart secure, so it will add additional securing stitches um, above and beyond what's already uh, digitized in the design. What is affected by this if it is turned on? When we were talking about the decorative stitches, it would create an additional knot at the end of each stitch before it stitched the next one. And so you'd have a lot more of a thread build up there and very noticeable that it wasn't a smooth, continuous uh, stitch out. So that's why we're turning those off uh, for this project with the a textured background. The other things that are affected is um, the cutting. We want it to cut between thread changes I personally don't want it to stop when it takes the first few stitches at the beginning of the design. That's a personal choice. But the other thing that I do want it to do is um, have a very short distance between uh, stitch connecting stitches. So I take it down and put it at one so that it will cut any connecting stitches that are uh, larger than one millimeter apart. So those are the changes that we make for this particular project. And the nice thing is you can change these for every single project, depending upon what you're doing. You have control over what happens when you're doing embroidery. If you want to have inches, you can come here and change it to inches or back to millimeters any time during your process. So let's go back to the stitching screen and we would, uh, are ready to begin stitching the first part of the design. Okay, as you can see, it has stitched the placement line so that we know where now to put our zipper. So what we're going to do is place the zipper between those two stitched lines. And you wanna make sure that you have the hardware outside, not even close to this. This will end up being stitched over and we'll, we'll work on getting the tab in the right spot a little bit later. But what we want to do is make sure that we get this placed between the two placement lines and then use the tearaway tape to go ahead and hold that into position while we take the next stitches. I usually get it all smoothed out, put that into position, and then we're ready to take this now back over to the machine and we'll do the tack down stitches for the zipper. Okay, now that we've tacked down the zipper and it's into position, now we're gonna start building the pouch. The first thing we need to do is this is the upper front of the pouch and it's been prepared. Those are on the directions on how to prepare it with the fusible woven and then folding it in half. We're going, I want you to pay attention to the ends of these stitches because when we place these other pieces for in the hoop, we need to make sure that when we're placing this piece, and getting the fold up next to the zipper teeth, but not on the teeth, just next to them, you want this to be extending the same amount on each end. And as you'll note here, see now if I placed it, I'm about a half an inch this way and barely a quarter. So we want to kind of uh, position that so that it's even on both ends from the, the tack down stitches of the zipper. 
get it even. And again, the fold is next to the teeth covering the placement line, but not on the teeth because we don't want to inhibit the movement of the zipper. Then we'll go ahead and we will tape this into position so that it stays where we have placed it. And I also like to put a piece right here. Just anchor those down. Then we're going to turn this over and we're going to place the lining piece in the same position. This is the, the uh, placement line for the zipper. This was our tack down line. So we want to place the lining to just barely cover the tack down and have it even with the ends of the front. So sometimes you can peek through here and see that you're making them even and just barely covering the tack down stitching on this side. And then you're going to take and you're going to uh, tape these into position also so they don't move on us. And again, they're on the back side of the hoop. So doing these ends, you want to make sure that nothing catches on it as it's moving around. And I, again, like to put a little piece here as well because it's going to stitch around that area. Now we're ready to take this back over and it will secure these two uh, pieces of the pouch into position. So let's go ahead and put that back on and sew. All right, the top front of the pouch is now secured into position here. It's all tacked down both on the front and on the back of the pouch. Now with this turned over, we're going to lay this flat here because we're going to position the lining, uh, the bottom front lining into position on the back. Again, this is the placement line for the zipper and this was the tack down line. Just as we did with the upper front lining, we're going to place this just over, the fold needs to lie over the tack down, and you want to uh, make sure that as you're positioning, you're positioning these even on each end, here and here. So we're just barely over this, and then we're going to take and uh, place some tearaway tape to hold the fold here in position. And then what we do next is we have to use this fold kind of as a hinge. So with that in mind, what we're going to do then is open up the pressed, we have wrong sides pressed together, open up the lining, here we go, and just bring it back. Remember the hinge is the fold, we're holding it in position. And then we're going to position a uh, tearaway tape on our corners and make sure that this can lay flat as we do our next steps of stitching. So secure your corners. We want to make sure when we go back to the machine with this, that this is going to stay open for the next stitching processes because we don't want to stitch our lining shut. Oh, maybe one more piece right here, just to hold it into position. So here's the hinge, we just check that and make sure it's secure and lay this back this way. And we want to make sure that we are paying close attention when we're over at the machine that this lays open. So we're going to flip it back this way. And now what we want to do, so we can see the color here, we want to take the lower front, and it's been prepared with the fusible uh, woven also, and we're going to position that next to the teeth of the zipper here, and make sure that the ends are even. I'm going to go ahead and tape that one into position. One more piece, there we go. All right, now we're gonna take this over to the machine and stitch the next, next step. The next part of our design to stitch out is going to be the decorative stitches. So before that happens, you can change the thread color on your machine if you wanna have a, a new color. And then the next thing that you need to remember to do here is to turn off the, the cut, 
cut connecting stitches because we want it to continuously stitch all of this without cutting the threads. You will have a thread to cut afterwards between the end here and the beginning here and of course at the end of this stitching we'll go ahead and we'll start stitching the decorative stitches. Okay as you can see the lower bottom uh, part of the pouch has been secured into the hoop and notice that the lining is opened up as I had indicated before. After that was secured the next thing to stitch was our decorative background pattern. So that has now stitched out and the next step will be a placement line for the butterfly. So let's go ahead and stitch that out and this will tell us where to place our fabric, applique fabric. Okay, the uh, outline of the butterfly has now stitched out onto pouch fabric and now we'll go ahead and place the fabric for the applique. This is a trim in place applique that's being done. So we're going to place it over that area where the uh, butterfly placement line is and we'll secure this with a little bit of tape hold it in position while it stitches onto the fabric once that is uh, completed its stitching then we're going to go ahead and we'll trim close to the stitching line that's happening here so now that the uh, tack down stitches have stitched, we went ahead and trimmed close to the edge of the stitching, not right up next to it, about an eighth of an inch away. And the next step is going to be for us to take this back to the machine. Again, make sure that this lays out flat, your lining lays out flat, and it will do the decorative stitch over the top of um, our applique shape. Okay, the applique has finished stitching and all of its uh, extra design stitching is done. So now our next step is to continue constructing the in the hoop pouch. So we're going to turn this over and as you can see, we left this free so that it wouldn't get caught. We're gonna remove the tape from these corners. So right now we don't need that. And then we're going to fold these back together, right, wrong sides together. These are going to get smoothed into position so it's nice and flat. This can be removed with these corners flat. Now we'll turn this back over. And what we're going to do is first step, most important step is the zipper tab must be pulled open about not quite halfway because once we sew all the way around here, if we don't have an opening, we're not gonna be able to get inside of our bag and turn it right side out. Then we're going to go ahead and place this into position and we'll go ahead and put these securely down. And we're gonna take this and prepare for the next step. All right, the back of the pouch is into position. Now we're going to turn this over and we'll go ahead and remove some of these pieces of tape. They're no longer needed. They'll be needed for the next step. And the next step is to place the lining fabric into position and it will be right sides together over the stitching areas. And then we'll go ahead and tape that into position and it securely. And I like to come over here and just give a little touch down. But it's just gonna stitch around again in an opening so that we can do a uh, flip and turn of our project. So we're ready to go to the machine. Okay, it's all done stitching and I've removed it from the hoop. Our next step is to go ahead and trim around the edges about a quarter of an inch. Do not trim off this part of your, um, they call it the neck. This is where we're going to trim so we can turn the project. Okay, I've trimmed around the exterior of the pouch. And the other place that you wanna do a little bit of a clip but don't cut through the corners is right here in the corner of each of these corners. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn this. And then the tool that's going to be very helpful when after you get this turned mostly out is to, to use the stitch and turn. And there's two ends to this little turner. There's the heavier end and the slider end. And I'm using the heavier one right now to just get bulk, bulk turning done. To wiggle it a little bit. Now the next step before we do anything else is we have to remove this tear away so that we can expose and get a hold of the zipper. So we're just gonna go slightly in here and just give a little bit of a snip to get it started. 
and we can remove this excess stabilizer and it will then expose the zipper. Okay, so then we're gonna continue to open up the zipper the rest of the way and then turn our pouch right side out. Now, once you've turned it, you do have an opening that we need to finish. There's a couple ways that you can do this. You could fold this uh, edge under and do a hand stitch this into place. Or one of the things that I like to do, especially with these tote bags, is use the light steam seam too. It's a quarter of an inch thick. And if you take a little piece and you iron that into position and then peel off the paper, when you go back over to the iron, that folded edge can be nicely pressed into position onto the steam seam too, and your opening is secure and ready for use. Then finally turning it and giving it a very good press job, and that would be your completed um, sassy stitches in the hoop zipper pouch. Okay, our pouch is all complete. We've added our decorative stitches to texturize our fabric and created the whole thing in the hoop. So hopefully this has given you some inspiration to create your own version of a in the hoop sassy pouch. So enjoy and thanks for joining us. Bye. Placement line here for my zipper. It's in the pink thread. And now what we're going to do, we're going to make sure our zipper is closed. And we're going to lay that on there. And here's some of this tape that we're going to be using. I thought I'd use the, the painter's tape just so you could see you know, where it is. We won't be stitching anywhere near that tape. But see how it's holding that zipper down? If I felt that I needed just a tiny little piece, I ironed my zipper to beforehand, but if I felt I needed a piece in there, I could do that. Okay, and now I'm going to start my machine. I have my machine set up so that it will stop so I can cut a thread, and that's okay, just like she said on the video. I'm going to stitch down the zipper. You want to make sure and use a nylon zipper. Never use a metal zipper, and you will see why here shortly. All right, now I'm going to take my hoop off. I'm going to take that little piece of tape off because I don't need it anymore. Oh dear. Well, what do we do about that? Is that a happy accident or what? What we're going to do is get a pair of scissors. Pretty strong tape, isn't it? And we're going to call what's floating. We're going to float a piece of stabilizer right underneath of that when I put it back on. So what I'm going to do first is this is my outside. The pink is my outside. I'm going to place it centered between the ends of it and I'm going to be just not to the teeth but just over that. piece there. Okay, now the fun part is I'm going to take and do that on the back as well. Just coming over my stitching for my zipper. And I'm going to put another piece right there. See, it's on the back. We haven't moved our arm. We're good. Oops, excuse me. I'm going to put it back on the machine. Now I'm going to float this piece of stabilizer under here. And that's called floating. 
So we're going to go from here. It's going to stitch down both sides of the top flap. piece of tape got in your way right there that's okay we'll just take it off in the end it's there's more that's going to be stitched on it so that won't be involved in anything okay there's what it looks like there and then it's stitched on the back this is our extra stabilizer that normally wouldn't be there stop before we get ourselves in trouble right there okay so back on we go now the next part we're going to lay our bottom part of our bag on there and we're going to come just come over our little stitching again we're going to tape it down I noticed the lady in the video, she used a lot of this tape. Now here's the really cool, fun part of this. Okay, here's our front, ready to go. But when we put this one on the back, we see our little, we would normally see our little stitching for the zipper. We're going to put that Get it lined up so that I can see it. And we're going to put our tape on it. We are going to use this tape. Because what this tape does, this is the secret to this. This is our inside lining on the back. Looky there. We're going to pull that up and we're going to tape that down. that kind of neat? So now when you're doing something like this, you always want to, you can take a peek. Is everything lying flat underneath? And it is. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I have the extension table on the machine. You don't have to have it on, but you can. And in this case, it's kind of a nice idea so that you can see the flat pieces. It helps keep them next to the hoop. tape folded over like that it's okay perfectly okay it's already served its purpose it has kept everything nice and flat and smooth and look at that isn't that fun okay now we're going to do the quilting part and I'm going to change my thread go I'm going to do a yellow I'm 
Well, not every time. Okay. Okay, I don't know if you can see on my machine, but it has up here in the sequences that we're going to be using the, the design that we programmed into the machine. If I need to trim some of my threads out, now is the time to do that. quilting done. So what we're going to do now is run the outline for the butterfly. I don't have to change threads or anything for that. I'm just going to keep it the same color. I am going to trim my thread there. hard to see because it has you know yellow on yellow here but you can see the outline of the butterfly I'm going to use this as my butterfly applique so I'm just going to put that down there and I am going to change the color of my thread and I thought I'd use this nice green going to do a triple stitch around the outside of the butterfly. Problem with it just riding right there. This is kind of a gauze fabric, so 
this point in time, we're going to take it off. See how pretty everything is on the back? Nothing wrinkled. You don't have to be afraid of it. But what I'm going to do now is take and trim. Leave just a little bit of space on the outside. You're going to just want something with a sharp little point in there. tricky part of this butterfly is right in the middle and that's where nice little pointy scissors are good. Okay, there's our sweet little butterfly. I think I'm just going to leave the green thread right on there. You can change the colors entirely up to you. The machine has stopped. I'm going to make sure everything's nice and smooth underneath. But I think today I'm just going to leave it green. finished. Isn't that nice? So there's our pretty little applique butterfly onto our bag. Okay, at this point in time, if there's anything you want to trim up or make nice, we're going to take this piece that we taped up and held up here. We're going to put it down. We made kind of a hinge with that, remember, when we folded it up. Take those off. There we go. And kind of remember that we had to put that extra piece on there. So we'll take that off. There we 
go. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect either. This is not about being perfect. This is about being fun. So there's our back. We're ready to go on that. We've got that held down. There's our front. Now here is, you saw it in the video, but it is the most important part of this whole thing. Take your zipper and bring it about to the middle. Otherwise you're going to be doing some unsewing and <sighs> might not be happy. All right, here we are. We've only got two more steps left. I'm gonna put it back on our machine. There we go. Okay, back on our machine. And I do want to say, if you wanted to put a name or something like this, you certainly could. We would have had to have programmed that into our, you know, when we put our applique on and our quilting, we would have put a name on there as well. So you're certainly welcome to add stitches or anything like that. But here we are. I'm going to take just my backing of my bag and put it on top. Nice and smooth. You can see where it goes because of the lines. And I'm going to go. But you know what? I need to back up a stitch. So there we go. We're going to go and do this stitch. I got all excited and got ahead of myself. We have all of our supplies here at the University of Sewing. We have fabric, we have zippers, we have the ice core thread, the bobbin fill. And this is a fun little project because you, you can take any nylon zipper you have in your stash. Um, colors, have fun with the colors, the prints. One of my little bags, you might not know it, but I didn't have enough to make the whole lining, so I got two different pieces of fabric inside. This makes it that much more fun. Be bold and brave with your colors. that just goes right over that nylon zipper. Not a problem. Should talk about needles here. When you do something like that, you might want to change your needle afterwards because you are going over zippers. You are going through many layers of things. I could probably make one, two, three bags and then I'm going to change my needle. I just have a regular embroidery needle in here. I'm going to stop and trim my thread out before I get in trouble there. I'm going to cut the thread. One last step. Now I'm going to take the lining back and put on here. I don't think you can see the stitching, but I can see the stitching where it needs to go. And I'm just going to use some of this tape. This stitching is just a little different. It makes kind of a opening in the, at the top. This is a very solid little bag. It's using triple stitches to go around it. So there's two rows of triple stitching. This bag is not going to fall apart. This 
is from Scissor Tail Stitches. The Sassy, Sassy Stitches, yeah, Sassy Stitches in the Hoop Zipper Pouch. Um, if you were to purchase this design, it has three different sizes. This is the small size. What a fun little bag to put your scissors and your USB sticks. going to take it out and cut it out but you can take it out of the hoop you can trim around there's a little corner right here if you just want to make a notch up to but not through the stitching and you can see everything on the back is all nice and neat so here's what it looks like when you take it out of the hoop so now we're going to turn it inside out And you're going to see the lining first. You might think, uh oh, where'd the outside of the bag go? But we're not there yet. What we have to do is take the stabilizer off the zipper. I can pull it off better. But remember when we said this was the most important part? We can't turn it inside out if we didn't put that zipper that way. So I can go ahead and open it up. And yes, it's open right there. If you wanted to take and press that down, if you wanted to use fusible tape, some fusible web in there and fuse that down, you could. You can take and hand stitch it down, it, however you choose to close that, that's okay. But now we open it up, turn it inside out. You can use a point turner, but it's really kind of easy. These aren't sharp corners. And there again, that's where you would close that up. And we have a nifty little bag. Get all the fuzzies off of there. And that completes our In the Hoop Sassy Stitches zipper pouch. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I can't wait until we can bring you another embroidery projects. Have a great day. Bye.